Creating fusion in a test tube, it's something scientists have been dreaming about for years, and something University of Utah scientists claimed last month they had done successfully. It is a claim that has rocked the science community and has made fusion a household word. But as scientists around the world attempt to recreate the experiment in their own labs, fusion has turned to confusion. Our science editor, Dr. Michael Gillen, explains. When Stanley Pons announced that he and his colleague Martin Fleischmann had harnessed the energy of the sun in a test tube, no less, local scientists were stunned. It sounded too good to be true. Uh, my first reaction was total, uh, uh, totally being incredulous to the whole uh, proposition. Here at MIT, scientists have been trying to duplicate the cold fusion reaction from day one. It's been a combined effort. Physicists, chemists, material scientists, radiologists, all working together. But so far, they've come up with no results. Uh, this is actually the second version of yeah, the first can. version. Scientists are specifically looking for the two things you would expect to get from a genuine fusion reaction, heat and radioactivity. What will it take for you personally to be convinced one way or the other about this experiment? I would hope that um, Dr. Pons and those that have been able to produce the, this effect would carry out experiments uh, which would, um, as I put it, uh, find the smoking gun, so to speak, as to whether this is a, a nuclear process or not. Decades ago, scientists discovered that the sun gets its energy from fusion. That's when two hydrogen atoms collide and stick together, forming a helium atom and releasing a lot of pent-up energy. For 40 years, scientists have been trying to tap into all that energy by building fusion reactors, huge contraptions that work at super high pressures and 100 million degree temperatures, but they all still consume more energy than they produce. What's remarkable about the Utah experiment is that it operates at room temperature and it seems to produce four times more energy than it consumes. If this is indeed fusion, what it shows is that we have been missing something, we, everyone, has been missing something for 30 or 40 years, and there is some amazing uh, new physics here that no one ever knew about, if this is fusion. In 500 labs worldwide, scientists have been scrambling to reproduce the cold fusion experiment, but with mixed results. Take, for example, physicists Simon Steele and Wolfgang Ruckner here at Harvard's Science Center. Now, have you seen anything yet? No. Does that disappoint you? Very, very. We all want to see something. And uh, even though everyone is skeptical and all, everybody has their own ideas, we're all hoping we see something. But uh, we want to make sure that what we see is real. What, in all of this, what has been the most frustrating thing for you? The most frustrating part is not having enough details uh, to replicate the experiment or trying to get the details out of newspapers. This is not usually the way we do science. <laughs> Recently, scientists at Stanford say they've detected heat but no radioactivity coming from their experiment. And scientists in Italy have detected radioactivity, but little or no heat. No one has yet to find both things, but then no one we talk to is ready to throw in the towel either. So we're still hopeful, I think. And I must say a good part of me, in a way, uh, expects this to be a hoax, but a good part of me really wants to see something. Hmm. Michael, I heard a report today that the uh, the two researchers had withdrawn their experiment from the publication Nature. Yeah, that's right. That uh, well, Nature magazine is this weekly science periodical that comes out of Britain, and uh, both Pons and Fleischmann decided not to get their paper to be published on that because the referees in that journal, that is the people who decide whether to allow that article to be published or not, said they needed more information. The Utah group said, hey, listen, we don't have the time. We don't want to go through the trouble right now to provide you with information. Give us our paper back. We won't even be bothered. Now, some of these other uh, <laughs> scientists are saying they're disappointed that they haven't been able to replicate it. Oh. Are they really disappointed, or are they, in a sense, kind of jealous at the possibility that someone else has discovered You know, I asked uh, a lot of the people I spoke to that. And, and quite honestly, obviously, there's always a little jealousy. But my honest opinion is that all these scientists at MIT and at Harvard are genuinely trying to find the truth. That's the bottom line in science. And yet. <laughs> Pardon me, there's so much rivalry, yes, but the bottom line is the truth is the most important thing. Often equated here the fusion with the, the discovery of fire. Is it of that magnitude? Oh boy, if this turns out to be true, my lord, it'll usher in a whole new era. It'll change the whole geopolitical importance of oil, for example. Uh, you cannot overstate the importance of this if it's true. true. And right. we will keep our viewers informed, believe right. me. Thank you, Michael. You're right.